Good morning. Welcome to another encouragement here at I'm Second Channel. My name is Brother. Because it doesn't matter who I am. The only one that matters, beloved, is Jesus. I never get tired of saying that. The Son of Man, the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the 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 rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, as the song says. He's everything. Today I want to be, we're going to be coming out of the book of Luke, chapter 24, from like verse 13 and going all the way to verse 35. For those that don't know, this is the road to Emmaus. When when the Lord was raised from the dead. When, when the disciples were first getting proof of him being alive. Oh, what an exciting time after being so depressed because of his death. And because they, they seen him going into the tomb probably, but they seen him die. Some from a distance watching, but they know, they knew. And now he was, he was alive. It was going around and it was such a buzz. At that time, and they were so excited, and some didn't really believe. And we're sort of taken off from there. If you read in even um, verse 12, it says, Then Peter arose and ran unto the sepulchre. He ran to the gravesite, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed. Wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. What's happened here? They found out at different times. Verse 13. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus. Which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together all of these things which had happened, walking and talking and discussing all the things that have been going on and all the buzz that the Lord may be alive. What an incredible time to be alive, right? And it came to pass that while they commune together and reason while maybe, you know, maybe it could be true. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But I don't believe it. Nobody just gets up from the dead. Maybe the Lord did that himself. As they commune together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. How wonderful. Jesus himself showed up to these two men while they were walking on the way to Emmaus. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. He held, held himself from being recognized from them right away. The Bible talks about uh, sometimes you're entertaining angels and don't even know it. Do you believe it, beloved? Do you believe it, though? It's true. So Jesus drew, new to, drew near to them and, and they didn't even know it was him. I think he probably does that with us and we don't even know. We must watch our life, beloved. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? What is this that y'all talking about, fellas, you know? I'm kind of headed y'all way right now. What are y'all talking about and why y'all looking so, so sad? Why you look all depressed? And one of them said, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Are you new around here, dude? And has and has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? You new around here, you don't know what's going on, you don't know the buzz. And he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, 
and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. We thought he was going to save us. We thought we was going to go to war with Rome, which is occupying our town, occupying our area. We thought he was here to lead us out. We was going to start a great riot, a great rebellion. <laughs> but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. We saw that it was empty like they said it was, but we didn't see our Lord. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. We must believe the word, Lord. Uh, Beloved, we must believe the words of the Lord. We must believe the Bible. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to him must believe two things. First, that he is, that he exists. I've told you this before. And second thing, that he is a rewarder. God likes to reward. Our father is a father who reward, rewards his children. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Faith. Oh, fools and slow to heart, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses, he took them back. He started explaining to them, what a wonderful sermon. This must be the best speech, you know, the best preaching ever heard in history right here. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. They still don't know who he is. And they drew nigh unto the village. They were getting closer whether they want, whether they went. He was getting closer to the village where they were going to. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him saying, abide with us, just hang with us. You know, the way you talking, we love him. You know, even though we missing our God, we missing our Lord Jesus. We love how you talking, just hang with us for a little while. For it is toward evening and the day is far spent, it's getting late. And he went to tarry with them. He was comforting to him. They didn't know why this guy was such a great comfort. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it. He took the bread and he blessed it and he gave it to him, broke the bread. And he probably did it just the way he always does that they ain't seen him do plenty of times. Because as soon as he did that, their eyes were open and they knew him. They could recognize him now. Oh, it's our Lord. I'm sorry. It's our Lord, Lord. It's you. You're alive. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us? Could we not? 
Did you not feel that when he was talking about Moses and talking about the scriptures? What your heart burning within you? We should have known it was him. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, while we were in the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Family, the Lord is risen indeed. He is alive. He, he wants to draw near you. He wants to comfort you. He wants to forgive you your sins. He wants to be your Lord and your master. Saying the Lord is risen indeed. And hath appeared to Simon, to Peter. And they told what things were done in the way. They told him the story of what happened when they was on the road to Emmaus. And how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. And how when he broke the bread that they seen him and they recognized and they knew it was him. Oh, man. And as they thus spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. He just showed up in the room. And said unto them, peace be unto you. Peace be unto you, family. Peace be unto you. And they were terrified. They were terrified and, and affrighted. And supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do your thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands. Hallelujah. Remember Yahuwah, one of the father's names, Yahuwah. His name means the creator of all the earth. Behold the hands. Glory. Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands. Behold my feet. That it is I myself. Handle me, touch me now because I haven't been to the Father. You know, maybe he told that uh, one of the disciples, don't touch me now, I must go to my Father and your Father. But he's back now. He's finished what he's supposed to do. He spread the blood, his blood on the mercy seat, his pure blood, so that you and I could have eternal life and be saved by trust in him and his finished work of what he did as he hung on that tree. Behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Handle me. For a spirit have not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wonder, they were so excited. They, they just still couldn't believe it. They say so excited because they seeing a dead man alive. They see in God's son alive. He said unto them, have you any meat? Jesus was hungry. <laughs> I think it makes you hungry and thirsty to been. Remember he raised a little girl and he's like, when he raised a little girl from the dead, Jesus like, give us something to eat. When you're there, you're, you know, you must be thirsting in the place of the dead. You must be hungry when you return. He was proven that he was real. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of an honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. I'm done right there. I went all the way to verse 43, but I just wanted to read some more. It's just so exciting. 
The Lord is so good. The Lord is alive, you are. And if you would receive him today without playing games, if you would confess your sins before him and turn away from wickedness and just say, Lord, I love you and I need you in my life. Come and save me. He will do so. That's all to be said, brothers and sisters. Do not spend the rest of your days rejecting him and rejecting his love, rejecting his great invitation to the great wedding banquet, the great wedding feast, the great um, just gathering that's about to go on soon. Be blessed, beloved. I need to say a quick prayer, okay? Father, save. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm second.